Uh, my name is Mary Murphy. I'm the program director at the Surrogacy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, which is just up the road. And we have been doing gestational surrogacy cases since 2002. And our surrogates, mainly 99% well, of them come from the state of Wisconsin, where it is legal. Surrogacy contracts are legal in the state of Wisconsin. Um, and I think I told you in the panel thing, when, in the quick introduction, when you have a baby in Wisconsin, both your names will go on the birth certificate as the legal father. So if you're in, in a relationship, both your names go. If you're single, your name goes on the, the birth certificate. Um, some of the things that you might be thinking about, and I don't know if you've said in any of the other sessions, but there's important things to think about in a surrogacy matching process, like what is an agency doing? And one of the things that's really important, obviously, is the cost. It's very expensive, and we want to help minimize your risk to the expense to the extent that we can. So we really want to educate you up front to see where you might be more vulnerable with your costs. So some of those things include, you know, obviously the agency fee. Our fee's a fixed fee, so there are no add-ons there. Everything's included. The legal fees, um, the, the medical expenses, and I think you heard on that panel discussion, you know, some of the medical clinics, they, they vary in price and protocol, so we encourage people to investigate several clinics to see what's good for them. A lot of them have what's called a shared risk program, so you pay more money up front for a guaranteed outcome. So maybe that's, that's a good cost-benefit ratio. Um, one of the areas where you can be really vulnerable, most financially vulnerable, in my opinion, is with medical insurance. You really want to be careful um, with insurance. We're fortunate enough in Wisconsin to have a state law that says surrogates, for people who have group health insurance, which is very specific, it's required by state law to cover a pregnancy regardless of how a woman became pregnant. So they can't exclude surrogate pregnancy, which is very, very nice. Um, and you don't want to find out after your baby's born that the surrogate, your surrogate who maybe was on bed rest in the hospital for six weeks, her insurance isn't going to cover. That's going to be financially catastrophic because as any of you know, in the US, medical costs can escalate really, really quickly. So we want to make sure that when we interview a surrogate that she has proper insurance so it leaves you less vulnerable. The other component is how your insurance plays into this when the baby's born. And you want to make sure, you know, maybe you think, oh, I've got insurance. Well, great. Well, does your insurance cover out of network? Because if you work with us and your surrogate's in Wisconsin, your baby's going to be born in Wisconsin. It's, you know, if you live in Illinois, is my insurance going to cover that baby, especially if the baby needs to be in the neonatal intensive care unit? So those are kind of some of the things you want to think about in terms of managing your costs in this, in this process. Because it's, I mean, I would say, like, it's financially, it's a huge, I mean, surrogacy is a huge financial and a huge emotional commitment. Because you get emotionally invested with your surrogate very quickly, but there's so many things that could happen along the way and we just want to help protect you in that arena. So one of the things, um, besides the cost you want to think about, is the timeline. How long does this take? And surrogacy, I mean, we tell people who are applying to our program that you can expect, you know, once the day you apply to our program, between four and six months, you should be matched with a surrogate that we can help, you know, find a surrogate for you. We don't advertise our surrogate our services, so surrogates find us most of the time on the internet. We have a we have a Facebook page, and I welcome you to go visit it uh, to give you kind of a personality of what our agency is like. And um, they, so that they might see something on Facebook, and then next thing you know, they're contacting us. They, the women that come to our program are really wonderful women. Um, there's a lot of criteria that they have to meet in order to belong to our program. Um, we follow American Society of Reproductive Medicine standards, so they have to be between the ages of 21 and 45. They have to have given birth to a baby. and have a healthy history of successful pregnancies, they can't be a smoker, etc. But in addition to that, they have to, um, in our program, they, they have to be financially stable. That's a huge component of this part, because you're thinking, who are these women? And it's kind of cool that you were able to see this afternoon live stories of, you know, surrogates there, because it's like, okay, it's starting to make it more real for you. And most of the women in our program are very giving women a lot of them come from nursing backgrounds, teaching backgrounds. They're, 
their professions are life-giving and they love being pregnant. I don't understand that, but anyway, so I have two of my own and I'm like, I don't know if I'd ever want to be a surrogate, but anyway, um, it's, it's a really neat, a neat thing. And one of the things, I mean, these are things that we think about when they apply to our program. They have to provide their medical records to us as they pertain to their previous pregnancies. So we can look through them and see, you know, is everything okay here? Are they taking any prescription meds that maybe don't mesh with doing a surrogacy? Um, if, we have, if they have a clean history, then we're fine with that, but if there's questions we have, we wanna ask one of the fertility docs we work with before we start bringing her in and matching her with somebody. Um, some of the other things is they have to provide uh, their insurance documents to us so we can look through their insurance certificate and see what kind of insurance they have. That's really important. So when you get matched with her, you know what to expect from her insurance. Um, another thing they have to provide is um, their information for their auto insurance. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but you know, it's, it's a law that you have to have auto insurance in the state of Wisconsin. And it's easy for them just to check yes on the application, but we just wanna make sure that, yeah, send us your declaration page. We wanna make sure that it's, it is in fact true. Our psychologist we work with, years ago told us to put this question on our application. It's like, how often do you wear your seatbelt? Always, often, sometimes, never. And I go, well, Julianne, why should we do that? She goes, if they don't check always, it's a sign for risky behavior. And there's some people that have checked sometimes. And it's like, for us, that's a red flag. Like, why aren't you wearing your seatbelt? And you, as an intended parent, you want to look through that application and go, okay, she's a rule follower. We know that she's doing these things. And, and then we're doing criminal and financial background checks also. So you know that she's been vetted, she doesn't have any judgments for money, she's financially stable, those, you know, there's no criminal record. So those are really important facets too that you wanna know about. Um, and then once she gets all this information to us, then we'll invite her and her husband, they have to come meet us at our office in Madison. We don't do Skype interviews, they have to come meet with us. And we want them to, it's really important, we wanna look them in the eye and go, are you worthy for our program? And at that time, we also arranged for them to do a psychological evaluation. And I think in a lot of, a lot of times the mental oh, health- Oh, they as well? Yes. And I think a lot of times that's overlooked in a lot of these programs. Um, that's something that gets pushed off to the medical clinic. And, you know, I've been doing this long enough and, and our psychologist, you know, I think I said, told you she was the uh, past chair for the mental health group for uh, American Society for Reproductive Medicine. And she helped write the guidelines for mental health in third party reproduction. And her evaluations last between four and five hours. And she's also doing, um, administering the personality assessment inventory. So we're doing that on the surrogate and her husband up front. And then also we require that you as our intended parents do the same thing. So we want you to come to our office, meet with us. We have a two to three hour consult and then the psychological evaluation. You don't, in terms of the cost to us, you don't pay, that's included in the fees you pay to us, but you really, we have a $350 application fee. Your psych eval's included in that, but once you're in our program, we don't ask for a retainer or anything. You don't pay us until you've met your surrogate and have decided to move forward. So you're not, we don't want you to feel financially obligated to have to work with us, and, but we'll work for you until you meet a, sur a surrogate that you want to work with. So. The testing is really important and I've, you know, Julianne, we work with her closely. She's an employee of the University of Wisconsin. She's a clinical psychologist there. But, you know, we go to these national conventions like American Society for Reproductive Medicine in October and she works with these psychologists from across the country and she's come to us several times and said, you guys are squeaky clean and you need to stay that way. And I go, what do you mean? And these other psychologists are seeing these people that they weren't vetted beforehand. And like for us, we've never had a problem, and it's because we do this vetting up front, and if we think they're good enough for our program, then they come in for the psychological evaluation. So it's a more peace of mind for you. So when you get a surrogate's profile, you'll get her application, her personal fee and expense form. They set their own rates for compensation in our program. And then um, you'll get a copy of her psychological evaluation, so you can read through that. And then you get her photographs, obviously, and what to expect from her insurance. So then you can look through that and decide, is this the person for me? Um, we only send you one profile at a time. We don't want women in our program to feel like they're competing with each other. 
And we don't want to also overwhelm you. And at the same time, when we send a surrogate your information, we're only sending your profile, not five other people's profile. So again, you don't have to feel like you're competing with other people in our program. So we have a board in our office like that, and people are on the, you know, like a whiteboard, and we're talking about it every day. And we don't just match you with anybody. We want people so you have a successful journey. And, and you've seen firsthand today what that's like, you know, women who committed to caring for someone. And it's a, it's a really neat journey, and there's a lot of joy on our part in, in helping move this forward. So, you know, keeping those things in mind, like cost, timeline, legal issues in the state where your surrogate's going to live, and insurance. You know, those are the things where you really want to protect yourself to the extent that you can. So, any questions? Yes. yes. And then uh, your agency will provide the, um, the lawyer? Yeah, we, we do. We really refer, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. We refer to um, lawyers and medical clinics, and the lawyers we work with are really trained in um, art law. So, so, you, so that's separate. You don't have to find your own lawyer. No, we'll, we'll help you. Yeah. There aren't that many art lawyers in Wisconsin, so we know them all, and they know us, and, and they love working with us. Yep, yep, yep. That does all that. Yeah, you definitely want a legal eye on the insurance. Yes. Are most of your surrogates from Wisconsin? Yes. Or are you okay? Yes, 99% of them. We've worked with a few from Iowa um, in very specific cases, okay. only because Iowa law's a little bit hinky, and so it, it had to be very specific cases. And then we've worked with some surrogates from Minnesota where the laws are pretty similar to Wisconsin, and then we'll work with a, a Minnesota no, attorney. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. And if you have a baby in Wisconsin, you get a, a cheese head. That's just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes? And, and the, the fee for the lawyers included or separately? Oh, on ours, we have an agency fee, and then um, there's this, the legal fees. And the lawyers we work with do, uh, for the agreement and everything, is a flat fee. So, so that's nice. And then you have the surrogates fees, the medical expenses, insurance expenses. So how much do you need? Uh, yeah, in fact, I have a um, cost matrix here that you're welcome to look at. It, it's um, for for gays. I would anticipate it would be like at least a hundred thousand dollars, maybe one hundred and ten, and that's like using donor egg, um, surrogate, agency fee, medical fees. The the one thing I we don't do donor egg. We we strictly just do gestational carrier arrangements and we encourage people to work with the medical clinic for donor egg because it's gonna be less expensive and they do all the screening on the donors, you know, so but here I'm trying to think I didn't bring any extra of these, but there's this is our um, cost matrix and it just kind of outlines where the, the fees go and then like this would be the low end, medium end and high end. And you quickly see like on the high end, I think I have here, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's because insurance isn't covering, you know, you've had multiple transfers, you know, it, it escalates quickly. So you want to try and protect yourself. Like one of the people today was talking about the, their shared risk program. You know, you really have to think about that cost benefit ratio because it's not 100% success on the first attempt. I think in our program, and now I'm just talking about our little program, it's maybe 70% of the time it's going to work on the first attempt. So you have to think, okay, what does that mean 30% of the time it's not working? So what does that mean? You know, so you have to make provisions for that. So, so um, say if we went to the first surrogate mother mm -hmm. and the pregnancy didn't complete, it didn't happen well, yeah. terminated, do you have to buy a new surrogate? Is that an extra cost? For no. No, we don't have a rematch fee. In fact, we don't have a rematch fee. And the other thing is we don't have a a fee like you want to work with your surrogate again for what we call a sibling project. Oh. So if I don't know if you saw, I call them our poster boys here, um, Greg, Greg and Guillaume. I mean they're out there, but um, they're they're a French couple, and they actually little Emily is going to be two in December, and they're already starting with their same surrogate on a <clears throat> sibling project, and they don't pay us. They just have to pay their surrogate again, and they have another legal contract, but the fee will be minimal because they already have a contract. They might make a little, a few changes, but it, it'll be really minimal. And then the other thing to think about, too, is that the medical costs will be less because they're using frozen embryos, and a frozen embryo transfers a lot less money than a full, brand new IVF cycle. 
So they had leftover embryos, and they're using those. <clears throat> so any other questions? When, if you have a couple that's setting out, planning to do a sibling uh, mm -hmm. journey, is, is that decided with the surrogate initially, or? Yeah, I mean, work? you can't contractually obligate her to work with you, but it's, it's part of the matching process, actually, because we want to ask, and that's one of the questions on, would you be willing to carry a sibling for this couple in the future? And a lot of them, well, yeah, if everything goes right, absolutely. And it's funny because, like, on this one, they weren't sure if their surrogate Jackie would do it again. Well, I'll ask her. And they go, really? They were kind of shy about asking her. And her delivery was a little bit tough, so they thought that, and she still had a vaginal delivery, and everyone was safe, and the baby's healthy, and so is Jackie, but they were thinking after that experience, she never would want to carry again. And, I, and they were too afraid to ask, so they were just going to join our program again. I go, well, well let me ask Jackie. And she goes, oh, yes, I, I want to carry for them again. She goes, I would feel like they were cheating on me if they got another surrogate, you know? So surrogates feel that way. And often we call them serial surrogates, the ones that want to come back. They come back because their intended parents don't want any more kids. And they're like, I, I want to do this again. I know they're done, but I, I really want to do this again. So. It is one of our matching criteria because if we get a surrogate, for example, who <clears throat> comes in and I want to do one more surrogacy and then I'm done, we don't want to match her with you because we want to give you that option to have that open for you if she's willing to do that again. So that helps. Yes? How long are you in business and how many people are there working with you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, we've been in business since 2002 and we were started by three attorneys who um, own the surrogacy center, and they saw a need with the advancement of science of starting surrogacy and surrogacy. In fact, one of the attorneys did the first gestational surrogacy case in Wisconsin in 1995, and she's also the one that got the Bureau of Vital Statistics to change the birth certificate to parent one and parent two instead of mother father. Because I met someone here last year, and they they had their baby in Alabama, and one it says mother father on his birth certificate, and one of them's the mother. I'm like, no, that's not how that works. But Anyway, um, so since then we've had, there's three staff people that we have, me and Leanne who's downstairs and Lisa who's not here today, um, she's in Budapest at her former exchange student's wedding. So it's the three of us and we've, in our program, I mean we're not a large program, we've had 127 babies in our program, so not gigantic, I mean I know some of these agencies are really big on the east and west coast, but um, I think a lot of that's, we don't advertise our services, people just come to us, or we come to these conferences like this, so we're not a huge marketing machine. But, um, but anyway, we really enjoy our jobs and the small role we play in kind of helping people have families. It's really cool, so, but that's a good question. Anything else? Get me out of here early? No. <laughs> oh, two more minutes. <laughs> so. Have you guys enjoyed, let me ask you a question, have you found the conference to be valuable? Yes. yes. It's good? Yes. Yeah. It's Very scary. Cool. I mean, I, I know a lot of you are just exploring this. I mean, there's people here who already have babies, but it's like, I liken it to like when my husband and I, we bought our first house in California back in 1988, and it was so expensive, and I was like, oh God. And I remember going home and laying down and going, oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. Well, guess what? We've had four houses since then, and you know, you know, it's just a big commitment, but once you do it, I heard someone today in the panel discussion say, just keep your eye on the prize. But just, you know, the surrogacy center, like what we, we are really here to help you and you, you use us as a resource. You don't have to go out and shop all the different medical clinics or attorneys, we'll, we'll help you do that. You know, there's, you know, we have our, what we call go-to clinics that are highly successful in this and, um, the one thing I would caution you in doing is try not to cut corners because it, it's going to cost you more money in the long run. So you go with you know an established agency who has established clinics with established attorneys and yeah maybe it costs more but I liken it to, you know I think I said to you today, you're going to have LASIK surgery on your eyes you don't go to the cheapest guy in town. You go to the guy that's doing them all the time. So that's the only, you know, if I can give you any advice, just do that. Um, I tried to give that advice to an intended parent years ago, 
and he did not heed my advice, and his case ended up in the Supreme Court in Wisconsin, and that's why we have legal contracts now for, for parentage agreements in Wisconsin, because I told him, don't go the traditional surrogacy route, and he did, and it cost him. I'm done. Yeah. So, so thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate it.